Hello everyone to another video here in the channel. Today we're going to be exploring this sweep mesh tool and a lot of very cool things that we can do with it in order to create this cage right here in just under 10 minutes. So without further ado, let's go. So you guys probably already know the sweep mesh function that we have here inside of Maya, right? We draw a curve on the viewport, we just hit enter, select the curve, go into poly modeling and sweep this, which is going to create a very, very nice effect along the whole surface. And the cool thing is we can modify the divisions, we can modify the scale like there's a lot of things that we can do with this curve but how can we use this option to generate something that's a lot more interesting well here it goes let's go to the right view first i'm gonna go to my curves option to my initial curve over here and on the top i'm gonna draw a very like nice little sort of like a cylindrical shape cylindrical cage right here something like that then I'm going to use the control vertex and I'm going to scale them to generate something that's a lot straighter, right? Like usually we would expect a bird cage to be a lot cleaner on that sort of uh, part of the of the mesh. So in this case, let's make this a little bit more or less curved on the top. Something like this. We'll still keep a very nice straight edge down here. And over here, I'm going to just like curve these things around a little bit, reutilize some of these elements to create a nice little curvature on this area right here. We can rebuild the curve. This is a function that not a lot of people use. Uh, and rebuilding the curve will allow us to, to have a, lot, a couple more points in this area. Actually, let's keep it a little bit simpler. Something like, like this, like a nice spiral going in. There we go. Once we have this, what I'm going to do, let's push this so that it's not touching the, the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one very, very like cool function here instead of Maya, which is, of course, duplicate special. So I want this cage to be made out of 12 sides. I suck at math. So let's do 360 divided by 12 and we got 30 degrees. So I'm going to grab this thing. I'm going to say file and then or sorry, edit a duplicate special. And we're going to do 11 copies. It's going to be a new object right here. It's going to be a copy, 11 copies, and we're going to rotate this 30 degrees on the Y axis. And when we do that, we get this very, very nice thing right here. So this is the base of our cage. Now we just grab our circle right here, position this right around the border right there. Let's duplicate it again. That seems to be quite straight as well. Control D again, and we're going to do it right around there. So I'm going to grab first all of this, guys, go again into poly modeling and sweep mesh. And as you can see, this is going to give us the very, very nice interaction. And these are like the main cages of our element. We can change the scale profile. I'm going to make them slightly thicker. You're going to see why in just a second. And once we have that, we can grab all of this, guys, again and do a sweep mesh for this, guys. And we're definitely going to increase the intensity right there, the thickness of the elements. Now, one thing is I'm going to change this to four sides only because one of the things that I want to have is I want to have them be the sort of like a metal bars. You can see that right now the twist on this one's right here is not perfect. So I'm just going to twist this guys a little bit so they're more straight, as you can see right there. And then I'm not sure if I can do this individually. I don't think so. But let's go here to this guy with Swift Mesh Creator and let's see if we can... Now, as you can see, the sweep is connected to all of them at the same time. So we will need to uh, to change it or, or do it independently. So I'm going to keep it just like that for now. Once we have this, and now comes the fun part, because I want to add a very like nice, intricate detail on this whole thing. Well, one of the things is, as you can see, this is not like currently on a on an easy like position to find, right? Like I would like to see just half of the whole element as a uh, in a symmetry line. Right now, we do have symmetry, but I would like to rotate this a little bit. So I'm going to Control G and rotate these things in step uh, in a step position right here one time. As you can see, it's just 15 degrees to the side. And uh, by doing that, now I'm, I can find this section right here. And I know that if I just build anything on this area, we're going to be able to get something very, very nice. So let's go here to curves. I'm going to grab again my, my create curve tool. And I'm going to create like a nice little pattern. This sort of like S shapes that you see a lot in like Victorian or I'm not even sure if it's like medieval or something. There we go. And we're going to right click, go into control vertex. You can see we're going to have quite a bit of control vertex right here. And we're going to start like polishing and cleaning this curves. This is one of the amazing things about uh, working with curves is that if you if you like take enough time to just like polish them and create a nice effect, you can create very, very clean and intricate shapes that would take forever to to model like traditionally. So don't sleep on the on the curves right here. Give ourselves a little bit more spirally effect right there. There we go. Just a little bit more there. Let's push this right here. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy right here, this new curvature that we created. I'm going to push it forward. 
to this area right here. And of course, we're going to do a sweep mesh. So poly modeling and sweep mesh. That's going to give us a very, very nice finish over the whole thing. Now, I still feel like it's not looking like perfect. Let's go to the right view here. So I'm still going to go to the curve right here. We can always just go back to the to the curve that we created, go into the control uh, vertices. And the cool thing about the sweep mesh tool is that it's still attached to the to the initial curve. So if I need to modify like anything on the on the element, it's going to be updating. And it's going to allow me to just like, again, move things around. For instance, I feel like I kind of want to like make this thing touch the border right there. So it kind of like loops back into itself. And just playing around here with the curve. So that's going to be my initial uh, mesh. Let's draw another curve. It's going to be like a, like a thinner curve that's going to help me with some details. And I want this thinner curve to be going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go curves over here. And we're going to draw another curve. So it's going to give me a nice little loop over here. And probably like end up, let's say, right there. So it's gonna touch the, the curve right there. Let's go into your control vertex mode again and start playing with the elements. I kind of wanna like touch a couple of other points at the same time. And this is mainly to kind of like close the loop. I'm, I'm going for like the sort of like art nouveau sort of effect. You probably have seen this sort of sort of uh like uh finishes. I'm not following any reference, which is actually a little bit of a mistake on my part, because ideally we would want to to follow a reference to make sure that we're as precise as possible with this sort of like construction. This one's not looking that bad. There we go. So now, again, we bring this whole curve, curve uh, in. It's going to be a little bit behind the other one. We're going to go back to poly modeling, and we're going to sweep mesh again. And this one, of course, I'm going to change the scale profile a little bit. So it's a little bit thinner, and it's not competing against the previous curvature. If it looks too busy, then again, you're free to just modify it and change it a little bit if you want. I'm going to grab both elements. I'm going to combine. By doing this, I've removed the connection to the curve or to the sweep mesh function. And therefore, if I modify or change the curves, nothing's going to happen. And what I want to do here is I want to go to the top view. And you can see that this thing is not perfectly following the curvature of my object. We can very easily fix that by going into our deformation panel, nonlinear and bent. And by going over here, we can do a little bit of curvature. We just need to change the gizmo here so that it follows, as you can see, the curvature of the actual cage. So here we play with the curvature and we can find the exact precise like curvature, which is roughly that side right there. And that's it. Now we we'll grab this guy. We delete history to break, break that connection again. And the pivot point is very important. We need to move the pivot point back to the center with the letter D and the X to snap to grid. We're now going to go to edit or sorry, file that edit duplicate special. And since we already have the same set of 12, look at that. We get this very, very nice connection everywhere. I'm going to press alt two or alt one to, to like hide all of the elements. And this is where we're going to get. That looks pretty, pretty damn cool. Let's add the bottom part of our cage right here. And something like that, I would say it's, it's fine. I'm going to have it do a little bit of overlap over there as well. Let's isolate real quick. And you guys, I know I'm a fan of bevels, so I'm just going to bevel this thing with a little bit of, uh, of an effect right there. Perfect. I might also just grab this guy, Control D again, bring this forward. I'm just going to use it as a sort of like a connection point up here because I feel like this looks a little bit weird. So this is going to be like an extra welding like surface there that just like keeps everything together. Definitely a, a little loop on the top might be a good idea. So let's rotate this one right there. And on its inputs, we're going to change the section radius to something a little bit smaller like that. Now, finally, for this area right, right here, um, we can think about doing another like sort of like this style right here, or we can just keep it simple and go very quickly with a circle and just add like a couple of thin like circles. Let's do uh, alt one again so that we can see it. So this one's going to be right around there. Let's actually do three. So it's going to be one, two, and the third one up here. We select again the circles. We go to poly modeling and we sweep mesh. And look at that. With that, we've successfully created this very nice cage. Now, one last thing we can do is I'm going to create a cylinder right here. I'm going to create like a, like a hinge. I'm going to add this hinge right around there. Right around there, I would say. Let's duplicate this one. Have this one right here. I'm going to select these three objects. We're just going to combine them. 
And then if we move the little uh, point right here, we can open the door to our little like Art Nouveau cage that we can find in a game or something like that. There's a lot of places where we could see something like uh, like this, like a very simple uh, bird cage. Another thing we can do is just uh, get our first curve should be right around here. Where is it? Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to grab the first curve. I'm going to rotate it 15 degrees. Let's uh, delete history. There we go. Actually, let's delete history on this thing. So if we grab that curve right there and we rotate this 15 degrees, we can do another uh, duplicate special. There we go. And then with all of this curves selected, let's isolate them, including this one right here. There we go. And what I want to do with this, guys, is I want to do another sweep mesh. So it's going to be a very thin sweep mesh. So the scale of the sweep mesh is going to be really, really, really thin. The only one that's going to change is this one right here. So let's isolate the geometry. Go to the front view and delete most of the points right there. I'll probably, probably delete it more than I should. Let's go back. So it's right around here. There we go. Perfect. And that's it. It gives us a, a, a little bit of a denser um, like cage, of course, a little bit more interesting. Now, one of the cool things about this one this is the last thing I'm going to do, I promise, is that we can grab the whole cage. And if we combine it, we can actually use our lattice or our, our deformed lattice. And we can change the proportions of the cage if we don't want this to be such a classical shape. Since we do have enough, let's say, curvature along all of the pieces or along enough subdivisions, we can very easily change this into very, very interesting shapes. I'm going to say yes and ask again. And this is what we get, like a very, very interesting, again, like crazy lamp. Of course, we have more divisions. We're going to be able to get something a little bit more interesting. But uh, yeah, that's it. We've uh, managed to create a cage using only curves in less or a little bit over 10 minutes. So hopefully you guys like this one right here. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about Maya, make sure to check our premium courses. We just released a new intro to Maya course. So all of these tools and a lot more, I'm going to be teaching you throughout that uh, 10 hours of content. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave a like and follow us. Also, make sure to tune in for our portfolio review later today if you're watching this when it airs on Friday. That's it for now, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.